Hi guys, how are you? Simon here. Solomon's Tales. Where do we leave it? It's been a while since I've recorded one. Yes, Solomon's out looking for potential work to stay in Patea. He wants to stay in Asia. He wants to work. He's what, four months into his one year plan? And he's just had a drink with the manager of Sharky's Pool Bar, whatever it's called. And the managers said that he's part of a group, whether he's manager, I don't know, who own a couple of go-go bars. There's a bar, go-go bar, a couple of doors up. And this guy, Australian guy, blonde hair, currently manager, is leaving. And another member of the group is going to come and take over. And Solomon said, well, you know, I want a job. Anyway, the guy from Sharky said to him that if that guy doesn't work out, he'll ring him. He said, let's go and have a look. I'll show you the go-go bar. So they finished that drink. Walk out, literally 50 metres up the soya. Um, it's not really that good a road surface in there. And there's a couple of other little bars about. But 50 metres up, on the same side is a go-go bar. I can't remember the name. Anyway, they walk in, um, and it's got a central platform with poles and girls dancing. It's very similar to a lot of the go-go bars, seats either side, and more seats at the back. And they walk in, and of course, he must be sort of one of the bosses, and all the girls sort of say hi, and he walks in, and the manager, the blonde-haired Australian guy, at the back stands up, and they walk through. Of course, all these girls are looking at Solomon, thinking, who's he, what's he all about? Is he the new manager? <laughs> Usual music going away. Not many customers though. I mean, this this go goes tucked away. It's early evening still. Anyway, they go to the back, and the manager from Shark is introduces this Australian guy to Solomon. Um, I'm going to call him Chris. I can't remember the name of the guy, but let's call him Chris. We haven't got any Chris's, have we? And uh, orders a couple of drinks. Buy Solomon a beer. Not fair enough. So they sit down at a table at the back and the Sharky's boss says to Chris, you know, this is Solomon, he's he's looking for work, but you're obviously going and we've got somebody already, but I just thought I'd show him in case the new guy doesn't work out. Chris is like, oh, okay, yeah, no problems. Hi, and introduced himself. Anyway, the Sharky's guy, he didn't get a beer. Chris has got a beer, Solomon's got a beer, and the guy from Sharky said, I'll leave you, I'll chat with Chris, look around. He said, um... I've got your number now. He took his number earlier. If the new guy doesn't work out, then I'll give you a call. Plus, I'll see you at the competitions anyway. So I'm like, yeah, thanks so much for that, and that's brilliant. And off goes the Sharky's boss. So he sat in a go-go, free beer. Girls all looking at him, wondering who he is. And this guy, Chris, they start chatting. And sure enough, this Chris, he's uh, been there a year, and... He's got some other guys from his own country who are setting up just a beer bar, music lounge with uh, pool tables right in the middle of Walking Street uh, on the beach side. And it sounds quite a big bar. There's a lot of money going into it. And this, Chris, is going to be the manager. Um, but he's not invested. But they are going to give him a bit of a share. So... That's unusual. Good for him. Anyway, they get chatting away, and Chris has sort of said, Solomon's asking what it's like being a manager of a go-go bar. And Chris is like, it's not good. Not really. He said, you're stuck in this dark room with loud music for many, many hours. You have to be here all the time in the evenings. Okay, they're only open in the evenings. They're not open in the daytime, this one. But you're here every night, seven nights a week from open till close as the manager you haven't he, he said he hasn't got an investment in the go-go but his contract with the group is he has to be there from open till close seven nights a week and he says he never gets time off in the evenings only in the daytime but he gets every day off and Solomon was a bit cheeky and sort of what sort of money do you make as a manager and he said well as a here working seven nights a week they pay me quite well and he was getting 30,000 baht a month. 
but no accommodation. So is that good? Hmm. And he's there all the time. Doesn't sound brilliant. And as Chris said, it, it just gets monotonous and he gets fed up with the same thing happening. And nothing ever changes. He never gets out in the evenings. And that's why he's been looking elsewhere to get out. And he's been living in Patera about three years, this guy. He says to Solomon, I haven't got uh, any where I'm going. I'm going to be the manager and another guy is going to cover two nights, two days a week because he's going to be working days and nights. He said, but again, like oh, the sharky place said, manager said, um, give me a number and if anything comes up, I'll ring you. And he'd ask Solomon how long he'd been there and all, a bit of history. He said, but in a couple of days time, we're doing a soft open down to the bar. It's all pretty much done. Come on down. And if you bring some friends and stuff, he said, I'll give you free drinks. Um, and come and have a look. And when we're doing a big party in a few weeks time, when we do the official opening. So he tells Solomon where it is. And Solomon's like, fantastic. Okay. Brilliant. Finished his drink and said, shall I pay? And he said, no, that's on me. No problems. He said, I do get free drinks as the manager. I can give free drinks out so many. So he said, it doesn't matter. He said, well, thanks, Chris. I'll see you again. I'll come and see a new bar. And off he goes, back out. So, a bit of a dead end. However, if you are going to look for a job in Patel and you want to be a manager, it's all about networking. You've got to go to every bar, every foreigner bar, and talk and just leave your number everywhere and even if you offer that you'll cover for one or two nights a week just to get your foot in the door in the bars as a relief manager the footwork you're going to have to do is cover the whole of Patea all the bars talking and asking that way something might come up anyway so Solomon he leaves the go-go bar wanders back down the road to the Atlantic bar or those bars walks in Ning's there goes in the other girls recognize him from the room behind give him a big hug and say hi he buys a Ning a drink and they have a couple of drinks for the evening and he's like that's it I've had enough I'm going home and Ning's like oh, I'll catch you later I'm staying here for a while like, okay whatever so off he goes walks down soy four back to the room and he's thinking, right, where else can I try for jobs and stuff? And he goes in and he drops into, uh, you know, the massage, soapy massage below his room just to see what's happening in there. And the boss isn't there, but the receptionist is there and he goes across and says hi. And the girl winking at him as always is there. <laughs> no customers in there. He goes in and he's like, got free coffee, you know, he's always got free coffee. And he just perches on a chair, gets a coffee, and the receptionist girl, cashier, whatever she is, she speaks a little bit of English, and she's like, are you okay? And Yeah, yeah. She says, what are you doing? He says, I'm starting to look about for work. He said, I fancy working, but not much I can do. Maybe get some bar work. And she says to, to Solomon, Oh, maybe talk to Sue. She has bars. He's like, She has bars? He's like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, oh, okay then. Brilliant. Anyway, drinks his coffee. Back to room. Crashes. No sign of all the girls. <laughs> and uh, well, there's only a few more days left, and then he's got to redo his room and his bike and everything sure that Ning's got a fella come in and oh, lose track with her. Still no frozen. She's still up in Bangkok. Anyway, over the next couple of days, pretty uneventful. There's no competitions going. The girls and Ning are in and out. Sometimes there's, they're all there in the evening. Sometimes they're not. Nothing happens. It's just a case of sharing a room with loads of girls. Um... Ning seems to have given up trying to find Solomon a girlfriend. Uh, 
and, and the girls they all know now that he's not interested so that's good so as I say we, we go by a couple of days and he says to Ning you know I've got to redo the room you need to get out with all the girls go back to your room and Ning's like yeah yeah we good. we've all organized the room already so they're all going to move out um, back to the old room basically so comes to that time Solomon's like I need to talk to Sue. He hasn't seen her a few, for those few days. She's not been around the boss. You know, there's a possibility of her having bars. But he just doesn't see her. And it's time for him to pay for the bike and the room and stuff. And he's still not about. Talks to the cashier. I need to pay for a room. Cashier's like, don't worry, we'll sort it. When boss back. Boss is away somewhere, so. Okay. And it's that time for this guy, Chris. His bar, soft opening. Solomon hasn't really got any foreigner Farang friends. Um, he keeps himself to himself and he just, with the girls and the pool competitions, okay, he's, he's met a few on the circuit of the pool contests, but he hasn't really, he keeps himself to himself. Um, so he hasn't got any friends he can take to that soft opening. So he just like, evening comes, whatever day it is, he gets in a song tell and he goes all the way down to Walking Street, down Beach Road. Jumps out the other end and starts walking down Walking Street, which is crazy. Any time of the year, it's just ah, oh, it's a, a a trap for foreigners that Walking Street. You know, there's just so many and so many bars and stuff. Really busy. Walks along and can't work out where this bar is. He, the guy Chris said it's in the sort of middle on the right, but it's before um, the escalator and all those places in the middle. And eventually he finds the bar, and it's just a very small front double door um, next to a shop. There's a shop there. Um, is it a tattoo or something? And he, there's a sign there, goes inside, and once you get in about two or three metres, obviously behind the tattoo shop, it opens up into a vast big bar, like a huge lounge area going right back. And if you walk to the very back, there's actually a, a veranda you can stand on looking and you're over the water. Huge bar inside. Going in, all modern, decorated, low coffee tables with sort of lots of leather sofas and settees around. There's a, a snooker table, like an eight foot snooker table on the left. So it's not a pool table, it is a snooker table. But it's an eight foot snooker table with pool balls on it okay in one section loads of seating area there's a few girls dotted around and on a couple of the coffee tables they're bolted to the floor and there's a pole in the middle of the table so it's like a little stage on a couple of tables with seats around it and the bar area is at the back on the right it's quite a big l-shaped bar anyway he walks in and there's there is a few girls maybe 10 girls dotted around no <laughs> customers as such um, and it's about 7.38 in the evening anyway he notices in the far right corner of the bar Chris is sat and he heads over and Chris is like oh how are you drink so I'm like yeah yeah let me buy one this time okay so buys Chris a drink and there's no one in there so he says to Chris this is the soft opening tonight and he said yeah, we've just told people we're not advertising, we're not putting balloons up or food. We're just opening the doors, getting people to find us where we are, like yourself. Word of mouth. And then in a few weeks' time, once we've got more girls, we'll do a big party, food, a bit of advertising and, and launch it properly. And Simon's, what, what sort of bar is this? It's like, I'm confused because it's all just seating area. It's very bright not dark very bright uh, there's music's not loud and Chris is like well it's a lounge bar so we've got a few TV screens on one side he said it's just a, like a chill out bar we think there's a market for that and we do we've got a bar menu for food we've got a kitchen at the back just for snacks and things for people and it's just for people to get away from the madness of walking street there's air con everywhere it is nice nice temperature but it hasn't really got a theme. And Solomon's like, well, this is quite weird. A chill out bar, 
the lights are too bright. I'm not going to say anything, and he's not an expert, so he's like, well, okay, yeah, right, seems it's really nice. He thinks maybe they'll change the lighting when they get open properly. Anyway, drinking with Chris, and Chris is like, any luck with any work? And he's, no, I not really know anyone. He says it's a case of just starting to ask around. And he's like, ah, okay. He said, I'm sure you'll find something. Uh, and at this point, um, Chris phone rings and he's like I've got to take this he said yeah we're going to have a chat to the girls and have a look around so Solomon gets his beer and sort of walks to the back window balcony area and here Solomon is thinking to himself this is a weird bar this is not a bar that I would come in to, on my own and there's only a few girls but maybe if I had a girlfriend I would come in here to chill out so maybe it'll work but huge bar loads of money they must have paid for it they're gonna to have to turn over a lot of beers and food to cover the cost of this place anyway he steps out of the back and there's glass doors that slide open and there's this bit of a balcony he goes out there with his beer and leans on the wooden uh, edge at the back there and uh, beautiful absolutely looking over the water and from the corner of his eye, he notices a girl come towards him and she comes out. He turns around and looks at this girl and he's, his jaws nearly dropped on the floor. She is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Um, the girls in the, in the bar I've seen so far, they're, they're just dressed in normal clothes. This girl has got an evening dress on. Um, Oh, just something about her. She looks totally different. Just does not look like a bar girl. She's got you know, this. I think it's a black dress. Um, <laughs> black hair is all of them, and black eyes. But absolutely stunning. And looks at that. Just her complexion is that you know she's got a slightly paler skin. So she's obviously got money and looks after herself. This probably isn't the girl working here. And she comes out and she sp speaks English. Oh, <laughs> she speaks really good. And she introduces herself. Her name's L. Why do they use letters for names? And then they start talking. And he's like, "Do you work here?" And she's not really. She said, "I've I've been um, working in Bangkok, living in Bangkok, and uh, a friend of a friend owns this group, and they've said to come down and help out with the opening and." Um, just be like a hostess, just introduce people to the bar and talk to them. So so she's not a girl working in a bar as such, she's like a hostess. So a friend of the boss is beautiful, speaks great English, and he's like, wow, wow, okay. Introduces himself as you do. Stunning, really stunning. Just one of those girls that you'll, if any guy that's in, let's say, Patea, as they, if you've been there a while, a few times, and you're out looking for, maybe you're looking for a life partner, a girlfriend, a, you know, a future wife, and the guys seem to just keep going round and round all the bars, trying to find the diamond in the rough, the perfect woman, partner, um, the best, stunning looking. It seems to be a pattern for a lot of guys. And I suppose Solomon was in a way as well. He, he wanted a girlfriend. But he wanted someone different, not just not the usual looking girls um, with the usual clothes on, you know, the jeans and the, the shirt and the multicolored clothing and things. Uh, but this girl, L, wow, stunning. Um, usual height, five six, something like that, but absolutely stunning. And Solomon is immediately, tch, 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 you could, his brain's going, it's just like, you know. So what do you, you know, he's asking all sorts of questions. You know, is she married? No. Is she single? Yes. Boyfriend? No. Thai boyfriend? No. Foreign? Ever had a foreign boyfriend? No. And she's, she's happy to answer all these questions. And, he's like, and she sort of starts asking him questions then. And he sort of, got to, he, you, you just because of Ning and Frozen and all the girls, he has to tell 
the truth, you know. <coughs> and he sort of tries to explain that he's come here looking for work and wants to stay in Asia and got lots of girlfriends that are just friends, you know, more so than foreigner friends. And Al seems to understand. Um, anyway, Solomon's like, would you like a drink? And she's like, no, I'm working. I don't really, you know, I'm helping. I don't want to drink. She says, um, I better mingle, you know, see with the other girls and see what's happening. She says, lovely to meet you. Maybe see you here again. And off she goes and he's like, ah. <laughs> has he got to chase this girl? This is unusual. And he's like, ah. Oh. He thinks, no, <laughs> don't push it. This place is empty. There's no customers. Very nice girl. Anyway, goes back in. Chris is off the phone. Goes back over to Chris. And Chris says, uh, yeah, a bit quiet. He says, I'll have to try and hustle up some business. And Solomon's like, well, got some lovely girls here. Bar's fabulous. Really nice. I think it'll do well. Um, and I'll come back. So, you know, you open days and nights. And Chris is like, at the moment, it's just going to be evenings. But once we launch properly, we'll do days from lunchtime right through. And uh, see what happens. He said, we'll try different things out. So I was like, great, all good. Anyway, Simon says, well, pays bill. Pays for those couple of drinks. And uh, says, right, I'm going to wander off. See some friends. Have a, you know, see what's what. Makes his excuses. Doesn't want to be the only person in the bar drinking. And that L's disappeared off talking to the other girls. He's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, says goodbye to Chris, and as he's walking out, Elle's on the one side, and he says, to, as he's going past, see you again, Al, nice to meet you. She, yeah, lovely. She gives him this, this funny look, and he's just like, that's a weird look. I don't know if it's a good one or a bad one. <laughs> it's just, just a strange look. And off he goes. While he's in walking street, I thought I'll tour the bars and see what... Uh, some of the beer bars and see what's what see if there's any work around ask a few bars and he spends a few hours just going up the one side on the right the beach side there's loads and loads of bars up there tries to spot where the foreigner bars are and you don't get many pool competitions down in walking street so it is just drinking and the usual but he has a wander around for a few hours has a few more drinks and uh Calls in a night eventually and decides to head back. We'll leave it there. Um, L. Ooh. L is a very pretty young lady from Bangkok. Very nice. So Solomon can't get her out of his mind for sure. Oh, but Ning, stunning, got a boyfriend. Frozen, got a fella. Hmm, maybe. All good. So Solomon's on the hunt for a job. And we'll catch you on the next one, see what he gets up to. Bye for now.